Iran appears to be sealing a bloody alliance with Vladimir Putin. Iran in that brutal conquest of Ukraine. Not only did the Iranians give Russia kamikaze drones or sell them to them, they also sent military trainers to Crimea to teach Russian pilots how to fly those drones and make them as deadly as possible. That today from the White House. This week we've seen this, Russia launching swarms of the flying drone bombs to strike the capital of Kyiv and other Ukrainian cities far away from the front lines. The drones have been killing civilians and wiping out power plants across the country, knocking out electricity and heat as winter approaches. U.S. officials say they're concerned that Iran will start supplying Russia with more advanced weaponry, including missiles. And there's a startling new warning from Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky. He says Russian forces are preparing to unleash a large-scale disaster in southern Ukraine, where Ukrainian forces are closing in on the strategic city of Kherson. President Zelensky says Russian troops have rigged a hydroelectric dam near the city with explosives. And the Russians, as they retreat, Zelensky says might blow it up, which would create massive flooding in the Kherson region and put thousands or hundreds of thousands of people in grave danger. The Kremlin's puppet in Kherson has been moving thousands of residents out of that city. <laughs> Meantime, in Kyiv, Ukrainian schoolchildren are training for the potential threat of a nuclear strike. Here's NBC's Cal Perry. A lesson no child should have to learn, how to survive a nuclear explosion. The teacher tries to make it a game for these eight and nine-year-olds, and Adam was walking with an Adam, she says. The two became friends as the children act out the parts. And while the fight at the front may require bulletproof vests, here at home, swim caps and goggles will have to do. A quick dash outside and down to the bunker they go. I ask nine-year-old Maxim for a quick explanation on what's happening. You have to be very careful, Maxim tells me, and pay attention to the air alarm and run to the shelter. We also have the rule of two walls, so that there's no windows, so the debris from the windows will not fall on us, he tells me. This war does not just affect the children, though these kids put on a tough face and tell me they're not scared. Is this, is it scary? So, so. Little bit. The teachers, the parents, they see it differently. They want to be brave. They want to show that they are brave, courageous. But they are scared. Everybody's scared. Tatiana Lasana is picking up her six-year-old son. And like so many here, she's already lived the unthinkable. When your son is asking me, Mom, why are they shooting to us? I don't want to die. And we're sitting in a shelter, and he's looking at me and saying that I don't want to die. I want to live. Believe me, that's, that's incredibly hard to... Um, to stay calm. A quick swing past the schoolyard, and I ask young Vika to play reporter. Go ahead. There is a war here, she reports in a serious manner. Our armed forces will make sure that everything ends, she says. Cal Perry, NBC News, Kyiv.